Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we take a look at the astrological energies from July 21st until July 28th. We are now entering Leo season and we also are going to have an increase in Virgo energies. So there is going to be a lot of productive progress that is possible over the next number of weeks. We are entering a phase of energy where you could feel ready for movement, to say yes, to go for it, to really make some things happen. Because when we have this combination of planets in fire signs and earth signs, there is the energy of a bulldozer. Taking that inspiration, motivation, and applying it to practical, tangible results. So this could be a time when you feel your energy is rising, you're ready to get things done, to move something forward. There's a sense now that it's even potentially easier, that whatever you've been pushing off to the side or you haven't had the energy for it, you could now feel the rising desire to get something done, to take take care of business and to make good progress in multiple areas of your life. So as we move through these last 10 days or so of July, we're going to have Venus in Virgo starting on July 21st and then the sun will enter Leo July 22nd, July 27th. Mercury enters Leo, and then at the end of the month, on July 29th, Mars enters Virgo. So I'm doing a rundown here because we basically have two planets moving into Virgo, two planets moving in to Leo, and we're really going to be able to make some clear choices and focus on what we are creating and moving into next. This could feel very welcomed after the watery, receptive cancer energies, after maybe a sense of feeling like you've had to wait. The energy was definitely quieter for periods of time in July. There was a down period. There was a lull. It could even feel like there was a welcomed relief. But now the energies are picking up and we're moving into some acceleration. Now, not only are we going to see the sun entering Leo, but as it does so, it has the first Aquarius full moon at one degree of Aquarius on July 23rd. So as the sun moves into Leo, it activates our solar plexus, our desire, our sense of power, our personal will. Leo is interesting because it's the fifth astrological sign, but it's the first sign after the sun has moved through every element. So the sun in Aries is fire, sun in Taurus, earth, sun in Gemini, air, sun in Cancer, water. So we've just had this experience of moving through all four elements. Now we return to the zest for life, that is Leo, what lights you up? What gets you inspired? Where do you feel your energy rise? Because what we have the opportunity to harness at this time is a clear understanding of our needs, of our sense of self, and what we want to focus on. Now, this Leo energy activates more of your energy field that is about your talents, your gifts, what you're inspired to create, how you want to shine, what lifts you up and brightens you. And because Leo is the sign associated with the sun and the sun burns brightest in Leo, we have an activation of very strong light. There's a higher potential here for energies to burn away for energies to just be complete because of the new light frequencies that are coming in that are showing you more of who you are. So it helps to give you a sense of wholeness. There's something about Leo that can be very revitalizing and it can give you some clarity 
around your priorities. It can help you understand what matters right now and also what is in my desires, what is calling to me, what is in my heart, what is showing me more of who I am. So it is an energy that's really about your aura, your solar plexus, uh, what's in your heart, and the courage to be yourself. The courage to demonstrate and feel proud in who you are. And this energy will be increasing as we move through Leo season and into August, where we have a very powerful Leo new moon. And I feel like one of the gifts here is that the strong Leo season is helping us to call energy back to us that maybe we unconsciously let go astray, like it floated away, or it's energies, cords, tides, intentions, something that maybe went outside of you, it got tangled up outside of you, it is often the ethers, it's in other timelines, in cancer season, it can certainly be in the past, but the Leo energy brings us back into the present, into your body, into this moment, and is showing you how to stabilize yourself in your own light, how to stabilize your aura and your energy field, how to feel strong in these parts of yourself as they come back to you, as they are being lit up, as they're being further integrated. Now, these are the energies, too, of understanding how you can truly recognize yourself, how you can understand more of who you are right now in a healthy way. Leo can help us develop a healthy ego. However, at times, that Leo energy can wear a mask. It can have a facade. It can show up in a certain role or a certain character to be a part of a production, a part of a play. Leo is the entertainer. It is the performer. It's the look at me and look what I can do and look at where I'm here to shine, which can, of course, be very healthy expressions. But we're also looking at where in our lives have we built up a facade? Are we maybe hiding behind a mask, or perhaps not being in the fullness of who we are. And this can be for unconscious reasons. Uh, this can be something that you're aware of. In, in fact, it can be related to family dynamics, sort of like your family has always known you to be in a certain role, or your siblings, your brother, they've known you to be a certain kind of person, and you've played into that, or that's just how you show up when you interact with them but they might not know the truth of your own growth, how you've changed, where your interests have shifted, what you no longer are interested in or where you have new passions. So the Leo energy wants you to really understand who you are now and to have the courage to be the truth of yourself. No masks, no facades, uh, no games, because that Leo energy can play games, even out of fun. Um, it can be very playful. It can also be a player. So it can have the spectrum of energy where it's enjoying the dance, enjoying the games, but it isn't truly real until you get into the heart, the heart of who you are and the heart of what you need. So these are some of the big themes here as we move through Leo season. And then as I mentioned, we have that first Aquarius full moon on July 23rd at one degree of Aquarius. I have a chart for you on YouTube where I walk through these energies and go through more of the specifics of that full moon chart. But what stands out to me the most are a few things here. First of all, this is the moon in Aquarius conjunct the same point where Saturn and Jupiter met up in Aquarius in late December. We called it the Grand Conjunction, where these two planets began a new synodic cycle, which means they started a new energy cycle, a new intention together at zero and one degrees of Aquarius. And so here we have this full moon coming through, activating that new cycle and activating 
how you feel and perceive where you're going now, what you are putting energy and effort towards, uh, what you've been committed to this year. And that's because this energy is now trailing behind that Saturn in Aquarius, which is at 10 degrees retrograde during this full moon. And it's showing us what's important. So there's energy around this full moon that's asking you to think of your future direction, where you're going, the vision you're holding for yourself. These are some of the themes of Aquarius energies. What matters to you based on your individual energy. So Aquarius is also where we understand who we are at an individual level and That is something that metaphysics supports, such as astrology, human design, numerology, uh, various different modalities that help you get into more of who you are as a unique energy vessel. And this Aquarius full moon is an activation of a deeper part of your self-knowingness because that Aquarius energy has a sense of knowingness. It has a sense of, I know this is true for me. I know this is my path. I know this is what I'm here to do. This can connect you with your mission work. This can connect you with what you've understood about yourself uh, that makes you different, that makes you unique. This can connect you with what you're feeling drawn to in a very powerful manner. But this Aquarius full moon is activating it at a deeper level of your energy field. It's more of that emotional body, which is the full moon, where the emotional body feels it. You're feeling something different and you could feel a new path emerging. You could feel a new direction. I feel like this is a full moon that's opening us up to new timelines. And by timelines, I mean new potentials and new growth trajectories that you're ready for based on what you have learned, shifted, and integrated this year, along with what you've healed and how you've raised your own consciousness. Aquarius wants to take us higher and further. It wants to help us go down the path and to ensure that it's really the best path for you. But with this Leo energy, right, this Leo energy, since we're now in Leo season, that is reminding you to travel with your heart, your sense of self, your sense of courage to be yourself where you could find yourself easily doing something because mentally it's right. Mentally, it makes sense. It's logical. It's coming together. But the dynamic between Aquarius and Leo, which are opposite in the astrology wheel, is that Leo is the action. So Aquarius is the thoughts because it's an air sign, the ideas, what you're thinking, what you're talking about, but then the Leo energy is taking the action, is what you do about it because the fire signs are about movement, uh, what you're doing to grow, how you are asserting yourself. So this is a time period of looking at what steps you're ready to take now that maybe you weren't ready for earlier in the year, but now it's showing up as something that perhaps is even easier, it feels correct, and there's movement. Now, I feel like part of this energy signature that's important as well is that with planets moving into Virgo, there is more of a plan. So we have Venus in Virgo as of July 21st, And then Mars will enter Virgo at the end of the month on July 29th. But in the meantime, there's something coming together where we're formulating a higher understanding of the plan of what needs to happen and the actions we're ready to take. There's, again, a readiness that's coming through here. There's a strengthening of will, a strengthening of direction, a strengthening of, I have to do this. So what in your life are you feeling that you have to do? And this could be a change that you're ready to make. Uh, This could be a bigger dream. This could be just something that could even be pretty every day. You know, if there's something that you're looking to change in your home or something in your work or on your desk, I mean, it doesn't have to be 
a big giant thing, but the energy is showing you how far you've come in a relatively short amount of time. And what you've moved through, what you've realized, what you've shifted. Um, This can also be a sense of you're getting downloads, real fast downloads. Um, There's a sense of I've got this information coming through or I just received an intuitive hit that makes sense. Now, a part of this can be information that you weren't expecting or something that you maybe were denying or we're not fully seeing clearly. And I say that because this Virgo, Venus in Virgo, is opposing Jupiter in Pisces retrograde right before Jupiter returns to Aquarius this week as well. So there's something that maybe you've had to let go of, a certain ideal, a certain thought, a certain perception, or something that you assumed Maybe there's more information that's come together and you realized, oh, this isn't what I thought it was. Or, darn it, I thought it was this, but it's really that. It kind of has this sense of switching tracks, like a train switching tracks. And you thought maybe it was one direction, but you realize that isn't really a fit anymore. This also correlates to the timeline changes where maybe this is something you're choosing and you're understanding this isn't the right direction. This isn't the right energy or the right fit. I'm no longer interested or this doesn't match up with what I've just realized or what I've been working on. So there is a switching of tracks, a changing of these timelines that is very intentional at a soul level. There's something here that you realized that maybe it's not what you thought it was, but that's because you've moved through that lesson. You moved through that energy and you recognize it or you see it and you're like, oh, I know what this is. I've been down this track. I've been on this hamster wheel. I can see why I was drawn to this, what what this was showing me, but now I'm choosing a different way to go that's in alignment with what I want, who I am, and how far I've come this year. So I'm feeling that split, that splitting of the tracks. And this does coincide with the energies of Saturn and Jupiter conjunct in Aquarius, where this is now a time period of making very clear choices, where you can't hold back the truth of who you are or what you want. You can't deny, even to yourself, what you know is true. Like what you know is true for you and maybe no one else knows this, but there's things that you've realized. You've come to see certain patterns in your life, certain cycles, certain loops, and you spot it. You understand what the merry-go-round is. And now this is a year throughout 2021 where we're shifting these tracks. We're moving into higher timelines. And this is very much supported by these strong Aquarius energies that keep showing up throughout this year. So we have this Aquarius full moon that is activating the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in Aquarius that was at zero and one degrees back in late December. Now we're checking in and assessing what did I intend or perceive? What was I thinking? What did I maybe expect or put energy towards in late December? And how far have I come this year alone in rising above and seeing things from a higher vantage point? That's part of the gifts of Aquarius. It lifts us up higher so that you can see more of the fullness, more of the picture, the full picture. And I feel like this is where, of course, we're moving on these new tracks and these higher timelines. And then Jupiter retrograde is going to re-enter Aquarius on July 28th. And it brings up even more around these Aquarius ideals and energies that we've been developing throughout the year. And I feel like we have some really exciting potentials right now of acceleration, of moving through 
either some lessons or healing or moving forward on a new path, a new opportunity, a new dream. There's an acceleration that's really going to pick up in August. So it's a bit like being on an on-ramp and knowing that you're going to be moving at a faster speed as August begins. And so what is your intention? What are you focused on? What are you putting energy towards? Because this is a time period for that type of clarity. And that sun in Leo brings you back into the energy of your solar plexus and what is truly important to you right now. Leo is a fixed sign just as Aquarius is. So the fixed energy concentrates, it focuses, it wants the security of what's known and it will stay with something to completion and to see it done. So there's something here about the commitments you're making to yourself and your future self, where you're going, what matters to you now. And it feels like there is some type of, I'm going to say it's like a fresh energy. It's like a clarity. It's, there's a removal of the fog and smog and debris. It's like the energy just feels clear and it has the room for new potentials. A lot about August is very dynamic. There's a lot of forward moving energy, a lot of progress. There's a lot that we're going to have support for in August. Um, it was really great to look at this month astrologically and see what's coming up because the energies are fast moving, things are connecting, plans are lining up. It just has this flow, but it's moving at a faster speed and not everyone wants to move at a faster speed, but there's a lot that can be accomplished in August. There's a lot of progress that can be made. And I feel like this is where we are really accelerating and living in some new energies that we haven't experienced yet. And I will be talking more about that on the next Monday podcast, which will be on July 26th, where I will talk about the Lion's Gate portal energies and the Leo New Moon, which is a very powerful opening. So we're basically on this on-ramp, gearing up for these new energies, this new start. And I feel like there is a security in it. There's something stabilizing. There's something coming together that is meant to give you a sense of strength. So look at where that might be showing up for you, where you might be feeling it, because the energy is very bubbly, it's effervescent, it has a lot of bright light to it, and it could be the time period when you can make quick progress on a number of things. So that might be a wonderful intention to hold or at least an energy to be aware of here as we move through these final 10 days of July. Now over the next week, we still have Mercury in Cancer. And there is going to be some dynamic energies here as Mercury in Cancer trines Neptune retrograde in Pisces at 22 degrees on July 24th and then opposes Pluto retrograde in Capricorn at 25 degrees on July 25th, then enters Leo July 27th. So this Mercury in Cancer is quiet, it's soft, it's receptive, it doesn't always speak up, um, it wants time to itself to process, to sit, to feel it out, to feel out the room, uh, to check in and see, you know, what do I really need to say, what do I not need to say, and as it interacts with both Neptune and Pluto, this is the energy of taking us out of our own private world and our own personal experiences to see things in a new way. Uh, the trying to Neptune is trusting yourself, but it's also a receptive energy of receiving a message from your intuition, from feeling energy coming towards you or coming in that is meant to support you and give you an understanding, a higher understanding that perhaps you weren't aware of or you didn't think of. And the opposition to Pluto can definitely feel like a challenge. It's not a good communication day when Mercury opposes Pluto, 
Rather, it's a good day to look at your boundaries, to determine what needs to be said, what doesn't need to be said, uh, where it's okay to hold back and bite your tongue because that might be the best way to navigate some situations. And then as Mercury enters Leo, on the 27th, there's a strengthening of that throat chakra. There's a sense of this is what I need to say. I'm very clear. I'm very certain. This is what I need to express. So Mercury is stronger in Leo. There's more of an urge and a desire to share your thoughts. Uh, There's a strength and confidence in doing so. And I feel like what we're working with here over the next week is to make sure that we don't let the mind take over. More importantly, we don't let the fears because there can be some silent fears. You know, we all have fears. We all have things that come up and bubble around and hang out in our minds. And this is where you're looking at how you manage that, uh, how loud those voices are and how much time and energy you give to these parts of yourself that are just needing some reassurance. So with Mercury and Cancer, looking at your thoughts, observing where your mind goes, you could say, oh, this is where I'm just needing to know it's going to be okay. Or I'm looking for something that feels safe, that feels solid. This is where I have a fear coming up from the past where I don't want something to play out again. So there can be that self-protective energy where, okay, I don't want to say too much or I don't want to put myself out there because I'm afraid of X, Y, Z happening again. And that's where you can monitor yourself and also be really clear in what is important to say and express where you're not even attached to the outcome. Like you're not even worried about where the conversation goes. It's just important to say it or it's just important to express yourself or to get something off your chest. And this is where we have the opportunity to practice detachment and to just allow the energy to flow without needing to control it, without needing to go into future potentials and future timelines. And one of the messages I was receiving about this is that detachment can be a choice. It doesn't have to be a struggle. Detachment through choice is your power, whereas struggling to detach can create anxiety, worry, a sense of big unknowns, So this is where over the next week, the more you can detach by choice and just say, I'm going to observe this. I'm not going to be overly concerned or overly emotionally invested because I know that the truth of who I am now is very solid, secure, and able to handle and move through everything. And this is part of being in the higher frequency and the higher dimensions is that you have a sense of your own energy that you can handle whatever comes your way. You have tools, you have resources, you have ways to navigate it that supports you. It's a bit like having an energetic GPS system where, okay, if it's a little bumpy, that's all right. I'm equipped to handle a little bumpiness. Perhaps it's going to go better that I'm anticipating. Perhaps there's a lot of good things here that will transpire because of the conversation, because of what I share or what comes up. So you can be in that place of saying, this is going to be whatever it will be, and I will be absolutely fine. And notice how that calms down your energy, perhaps that calms down emotions or worry, it calms down anxiety or your nervous system. It just helps you relax when you give yourself those reminders that you're fully equipped to handle anything that comes up. And chances are, there's something about this Mercury and Cancer where you can be really wrapped up in anticipation. That anticipation of something and it hasn't happened yet and you're just kind of going into all these scenarios and possibilities and the anticipation is much bigger than the reality. Almost like 
when you feel like you have to ask somebody to do something or for a favor and it feels like a big ask, right? It feels like a big deal. I want to say this right. I don't want to mess this up. How do I say this in a way that they're going to receive it? And you kind of put all this effort and thought into it and you write the email or you get the bullet points of what you want to say in the conversation. And then you share this with them or you let them know what you're thinking and they're like, yeah, that's great. Sure. I'm happy to do that. Why not? And it's just easy. It just has that easy yes, that easy flow, that sense of no big deal. Even though we can feel like it's a big deal beforehand. That's a little bit of this energy here where just monitor that for yourself in how much you're putting into something that you're preparing, something that is important that you want to do, that you want to say. Because I feel like this flowing energy is really supporting us right now. It's really supporting the movement. And that's because the universe needs us to move forward. The universe needs us to move it along, to not be continually wrapped up or circling around in old patterns, old loops, and expired energies in ourselves. The universe needs us to keep growing, to keep evolving, and That is something that's really supported here over this next week and as we move into August is that acceleration that I mentioned. There's the energy is going to pick back up. Things are going to start happening, start moving, but it could feel like there's a sense of ease around it. You know, like when you just lock into a higher gear and it just moves. So this feels very supportive, again, feels like it's going to pick up the pace, but this is where we're also looking at our intentions, what really matters right now, what's really important, what is resonating with the truth of who you are, especially throughout this year. So we're going to have more Aquarius energies here as we move through Leo season, because not only do we have this first Aquarius full moon, We have Jupiter returning to Aquarius. It will be retrograde back to 22 degrees of Aquarius until October 18th. And we also have a second Aquarius full moon on August 22nd at 29 degrees of Aquarius. So we're really getting clear here about the future, what matters, what you're putting effort into what you're developing, what you're building, and the support for that as you take it each day. Now, we also have a number of outer planets retrograde. In fact, all planets are retrograde except Uranus, which will station retrograde August 19th. So Jupiter, Saturn, Chiron, Neptune, and Pluto all retrograde, which means We are covering turf and territory that we've already been working on. We're reassessing, looking at what is the clear choice, what's the best for me right now, what matters, where do I need to put my time and energy. And so this feels like it's giving us an opportunity to take time with what's in front of us and to ensure that what you're working on, and I mean that in any or all areas of life. Uh, This is, of course, general information, so you'd want to just apply it to yourself and your world. But if you've been doing a lot of spiritual work or healing work, if you've been doing a lot at the office or in your career, if you've been doing a lot with family, whatever it might be, this is where clarity is emerging. There's really a sense of, I'm done with some of these loops, I'm done with some of these cycles, And I have fresh eyes. I have a sense of this is the clarity I've been looking for around what matters to me. And I'm going to honor that. I'm going to trust that in myself. And I'm going to listen to what I need. Now, Venus is in Virgo where she is focused on getting things done in our lives. She wants our bodies to feel good. She wants our houses to look good. She wants us to be organized, to feel good about our bodies, to understand what we need to feel healthy in terms of self-care, anything that supports your physical energy. So this Venus in Virgo is bringing our attention to the tasks and projects that we can complete and get done. Sometimes this Venus in Virgo 
Uh, she's particular, she can be a little fussy, uh, she wants things her own way, but she can be very clear and discerning about what that is, where that's a mess, I don't want that here, that's old, that's ugly, that needs to go. And then she also says, this is what feels good, this is what looks good, this is what matters. So the Venus energy, which is the feminine energy, is more in a sense of what can I move forward and get done? What can I change in my life that will support how I love and accept myself? Because Venus wants us to have confidence in who we are, wants us to love who we are. But in Virgo, she wants us to also improve, improve who we are, heal who we are. So this could be a great time for body work energy work on the body, anything that supports the physical self, uh, you could even be feeling more messages of what your body needs. And as I mentioned at the end of the month, on July 29th, Mars will enter Virgo, and Mars always moves into a sign with gusto. And in Virgo, he is also very much about the body, physical well-being, healthy habits, of what you're doing on a daily basis to move energy through you. Mars is strong in Virgo. It's the sign of the athlete. It's the energy of dedicating time to tangible results. So improving the body, uh, improving your exercise regimes or your eating habits. You know, what raises your vibration? What gives you life? What gives you energy? That's what both Mars and Venus in Virgo are going to reveal over the next number of weeks. So we have potentials here to improve our lives, improve ourselves, look at what we're ready to change, having the energy to do so, being ready to commit to a part of ourselves, a part of our lives, and also understanding what to take seriously, what's important for you, where to direct your energy, what matters. Now, the other thing that transpires over this next lunar cycle is that we have these two moons in Aquarius, these two full moons, excuse me. And so what happens is that the lunar cycle returns to its normal flow. And I released a video on YouTube explaining how we've been experiencing a reverse lunar cycle since June 2020. Now, in August 2021, we are returning to a normal lunar cycle. So I will put that video link below so that you can check it out and see what I mean more specifically because it is one of the gifts of having these two full moons in Aquarius. Now, also over the past weekend, I released four videos for you on YouTube that are about different aspects between the outer planets that affect millions of people. And these individual videos go into specifics in a chart based on when you were born. So there's two videos so far on if you were born in the 60s. Uh, there's one video if you were born in the early 70s, and then another video for those born in the late 80s, early 90s. Now, the way I'm doing these videos is I'm looking at the outer planets and the aspects they're making to each other over a longer period of time. So as you can see, these are energies that unfolded over a few years. So they typically will include Saturn, Chiron, Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto, and any conversations between those planets that we can find in the birth charts of millions of people born during those specific years. So I will have some more of those videos coming out. They are not in order. Um, I know that some people thought I skipped parts of the 70s. Um, I, I didn't skip anything. I'm just doing this in kind of a sporadic order because it takes time to find these outer planet aspects. And so as I find them, then I will do a video for you on them. So I do have a few more coming out uh, this weekend as well. And they're meant to help you understand some of the specific energies in your chart. 
And they're meant to also show you more of how astrology shows up in our lives, how astrology is very real and how it becomes apparent when we understand the language of astrology, when we know what the glyphs and the symbols mean, then we start to see how these energies show up and how they can be very fascinating to understand. Also, the new August 2021 monthly soul growth astrology program is now available and you can get it with coupon code LEO for only 11 bucks. And this is where we go through all the astrology of August. And as I mentioned, it's a very dynamic month, productive, progressive, things are happening, very fast moving. So hopefully that is something that will support you, whether your birthday is in August or you just enjoy following along with these monthly transits. That program is now available. So as always, thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate your energy and presence as we talk about these astrological energies. You can find out more about me at mollymccord.online. And yes, you can still buy the Solar Return Program for 50% off. That's with coupon code BIRTHDAY. And that's the program that helps you read your astrology chart for every year of your life. And that's what the solar return is, is when the sun returns to your date and time of birth. And it shows you the energy for the year ahead. And it's a great way to not only understand your life, but also to further your astrological knowledge and to put it into use. So please check that out if you are intermediate level astrology, meaning you already understand the basics of looking at a chart. Um, That is important here because that's what you're going to be doing is basically understanding this specific chart and what it means for you in the year ahead. So I wish you a beautiful Aquarius full moon, whatever may open up, whatever may shift or change or become clearer to you. May it be exactly what you're ready for, exactly what you want. And in the meantime, I hope that this final 10 days of July really brings you back into your sense of self and your sense of power. I will be back here every Monday and Wednesday for another podcast episode. So I'll see you on Monday for a look at the Lionsgate Leo new moon energies. And then on next Wednesday, we'll talk about the energies as we move into August. So take good care, my friends. Wish you a beautiful Aquarius full moon, and I'll see you soon.